Hi, I'm going to tell you about a great resource that your library offers you. It's called Science Direct, and it's a database produced by a publishing company called Elsevier. You might secretly be wondering, what exactly is a database anyway? You may think that's a remedial question, but it really isn't. A database is a collection of pieces of data, in this case, articles and books, that have been organized so that you can find what you need to find easily. Each article has been tagged with keywords, which are then used to create an index so that you can find any article you want that's in the database. Almost none of the articles in ScienceDirect can be found via a regular Google search on the Internet. You might be able to find citation information, let's say if you're looking in Google Scholar, but you would not actually be able to access most of them without a subscription to Science Direct. How do you get that subscription? Lucky you! Your university has subscribed for you. That's right, your university has paid for a subscription to Science Direct. That's why you're able to access it. If you were not affiliated with this university, you most likely would not be able to use the database. As I mentioned before, Science Direct is published by Elsevier, which is one of the largest scientific and scholarly publishers in the world. Elsevier publishes about 2,000 journals and thousands of books each year, and one of the ways that it makes its content available is through subscription databases like ScienceDirect. ScienceDirect is part of a larger hub of Elsevier science resources called Cyverse. ScienceDirect includes content from about 2,500 journals and 11,000 books. But wait, didn't we just learn that Elsevier publishes only 2,000 journals? That's true, but Science Direct also contains content from some journals that Elsevier doesn't publish. The goal is to make it as well-rounded and complete a resource as possible. The content in Science Direct is divided into four broad subject areas. Physical sciences and engineering, life sciences, health sciences, and social sciences and humanities. Most subscriptions offer content dating back to four years from whenever the subscription began. That means that if your university has been subscribing since 2004, you can access content from the year 2000 on. All right, now let's take a look at the ScienceDirect database itself. Here's the home page of ScienceDirect. We got here by clicking on the ScienceDirect link from the database list on the library's website. First, notice this number here on the upper left part of the screen. This is the number of articles indexed in ScienceDirect. This number grows all the time as Elsevier adds new content to the database. Right now, it's at 11,053,159. It's a lot of articles. Next, note on the left side of the screen that the four broad subject areas are broken out into their component subjects. So under physical sciences and engineering, we have chemistry, astronomy, physics, and more. Under life sciences, we have agricultural science, biochemistry, genetics, environmental science, and so on. Health sciences covers medicine, dentistry, nursing, pharmacology, and so forth. You can browse by any of these subjects. However, since you are all social sciences students, we're going to focus on the last category, social sciences and humanities. When I click on social sciences, I'm redirected to a list of all the books and articles that are indexed in this subject area. I can click on any one of these titles and search within that specific book or journal if I want to. You can see that there are several choices on the left side of the screen. Full text means that the entire article is available to you, not simply a summary or citation information. Abstract only means that you can only get the brief summary that most scientific articles include at the beginning. The reason some articles are not offered in full text has to do with the kind of subscription your university has. Here I've unchecked abstract only because I want to be sure that when I search for articles, I'm searching only for things that I can actually download and read. Now let's search for articles for a hypothetical research paper for Psychology 101. Let's go back to the home page for a moment. One of the first things you need to do is decide on your paper's topic. If you need inspiration, a good way to find ideas is to look at the top 25 hottest articles in your subject area. 
This is a list of the 25 articles that have been downloaded most often within a specific subject area and a specific span of time. So over here on the left, I've selected psychology. Next, I've selected a time span I want to look at. I'm going to stick with current, which shows the most recent three months worth of articles that are indexed. As I study the list of articles, I see that just about the hottest topic in psychology during this period was the study of Facebook use, particularly among college students. Fascinating. Specifically, I'd like to investigate the correlation between Facebook use and my grade point average. Oh, Article 8, Facebook and Academic Performance, looks just about perfect for my purposes. So let's click on it and see what happens. When I click on the article's title, I'm redirected to an HTML version of the article. This contains the full text of the article. All you have to do is scroll down to read the whole thing. We'll investigate this page in more detail a little later on, but right now I just want to draw your attention to a couple of very useful features. First, notice the list of related articles on the upper right. This offers links to a long list of articles that contain similar or related subject matter to this article. This list can run to hundreds of links, and it really can help you out. Below the related articles, we have a list of related reference work articles. These are things like encyclopedia entries that give basic general information about the subject areas that are covered in this article. Between these two features, related articles and related reference articles, it's quite possible that you will find all the resources you need for a short paper. Not too difficult, right? But what if you want to research a different topic, one that's not on the top 25 list? How are you going to find articles then? Well, in that case, you're actually going to have to search the database. It's important to understand that you don't search a database the way you search using Google. The search engine in a database works differently. Most database search engines operate using some form of Boolean search. Boolean may sound strange, but it just comes from the name of a 19th century mathematician, George Boole. A Boolean search uses keywords. That's words, not phrases or sentences. So, whereas you might type a question into the Google search bar like, does Facebook use affect academic performance? If you do that in Science Direct, you will probably get very strange results, or more likely no results at all. Let's try it. As you can see, typing in our question didn't work very well, in spite of the fact that we already know there are lots and lots of articles about Facebook use and academic performance in the database. ScienceDirect has its own customized version of a Boolean search. There are lots of nuances, but here we're just going to look at some key features that will help us. Connectors are terms that you use to link your keywords. Type AND between keywords when you want your search results to include all the keywords. Type OR between keywords when you want your results to include any one of the keywords. If you want to search for a specific phrase, put it in quotation marks. This tells the search engine to look for those words in that specific order. Use wildcard characters if you want the search engine to fill in missing letters. So ACADEM with an asterisk will tell the search engine to retrieve results with academic, academy, academics, academia, and so forth. Okay, now let's try a search. Let's go back to the home page once again. Notice the green ribbon running across near the top of the screen. This is your main command bar and it's accessible from most pages on the site. Select search. That will bring you to this screen. I've decided I want to research procrastination and how it affects college students, and I've already filled in a search term. Notice that I used a wildcard character here so that my search will include procrastinate, procrastination, procrastinators, and so on. This drop-down menu allows you to choose where you want the search engine to search for keywords. I only want to search in the abstract title or list of keywords. That makes it more likely that I'll get results in which the main topic of the article is procrastination. I could use the second field to add another keyword, but I'm not going to do that just yet. 
Sometimes it's best to start with a relatively broad search and then narrow your results once you see what you're getting. On the Sources drop-down, I've chosen Subscribed Sources. This will make sure that my search covers journals that I have full access to. On the Subjects menu, I've selected Psychology and Social Sciences. This way, my search won't include results from, say, Physics. Okay, let's hit Search and see what happens. Here's our results page. The first thing I notice is that I've gotten 122 results from my search. That's a lot of results. I don't want to read through the abstracts of 122 articles to find out which ones are right for me. I'd rather narrow the search. There are several ways to do that from this page. For example, I could choose Edit This Search. That would bring me back to my search screen, where I could add search terms, change search terms, or change some of the other parameters. I could also add an additional search term here and use it to search within my results. One of the really nice features of ScienceDirect is that you can also use the topic list on the left side of the page to home in on your subject more precisely. That's what I'm going to do. These topics are linked to terms in the abstracts and keyword lists of the articles. I'm going to go through the whole list and check the ones that seem most relevant to my topic. Then I'm going to select Limit To so that my search results will include only the topics I've selected. Aha! Now I only have 20 results for my search. That's much more manageable. And if I've chosen my search terms well, the list should be much more relevant to my search topic. You can sort the results by relevance or by publication date. Let's click on one of these articles and see what we got. Individual Differences in Academic Procrastination Tendency and Writing Success. Okay, this article looks pretty relevant. Notice again that we have a number of related articles that I can also look at. And don't forget the related reference. Those entries are always useful for background information, and they may also point you to other sources that could help you. I'd also like to point out another useful feature of ScienceDirect, which is the Cited By box. This gives you a list of all the articles that cited your chosen article as part of their reference list. It's not as direct a connection as the related articles list, but you may find some other useful content here. The last thing I'd like to point out is the References tab. This allows you to go directly to the list of sources the authors used in their own research. Again, the reference list will probably be a great source for yet more material on your topic. Here's a look at the reference list. While we're on this page, take a look at these other great things you can do with ScienceDirect. You can download a printable PDF of your article. You can export a citation. If you use a program like RevWorks, this can be a really useful feature. All you have to do is choose your citation style, and ScienceDirect and RevWorks will do the rest. Be sure to check the citation carefully, though. Don't rely on the programs to get all the format details right. You can also email a copy of the article to yourself, your research partner, or anyone else. And that is your brief introduction to ScienceDirect. I hope it's helpful as you research your papers. Remember, if you have any questions at all, your librarians are more than glad to help you. Happy searching!